Hello to all and thank you for your interest in my work on the structure function of novel Jaffrey autophosphorylation sites. My name is Georgia Lina Rodriguez and I am an associate professor of research in the Department of Biological Sciences with the Border Biomedical Research Center at the University of Texas at El Paso. Our institution is located along the southern U.S.-Mexico border where our community is greater than 85 percent Hispanic. As a result, we face unique health challenges. According to the American Cancer Society, Hispanics have the highest rates for cancers associated with infectious agents. This includes cervical cancer, liver, and stomach. Also a concern for the Hispanic population are non-infectious agent-driven cancers, such as those of the blood, where Hispanic children and adolescents have the highest rates of leukemia and are at a higher risk of relapse. As you may know, cancer is the leading cause of death for Hispanics and the second leading cause of death for Hispanic children who are twice as likely to be diagnosed with cancer than non-Hispanics. In fact, Hispanic children incur the highest rates of leukemia compared to all other ethnicities. Shockingly, acute lymphoblastic leukemia accounts for 78% of Hispanic childhood leukemia cases. And sadly, the Hispanic population also experiences a disproportionate health outcome post-therapy with the five-year free survival rate for ALL being 4% lower in Hispanic children. The reasons for these disparity in leukemia incident rates are not known. But what is known is that tyrosine kinases are associated with oncogenic mutations which drive many cancers. So it's not surprising that the tyrosine kinase JAK3 has been reported to contain 14 mutations and that these mutations have been found in patients with AML and ALL. And some of these mutations have been reported to be transforming in nature, and that includes by our own group. And so our group seeks to better understand how transforming mutations impact normal protein regulation. Toward this goal, we have performed an autoactivation in vitro kinase assay using purified JAK3 and coupled it to mass spectrometry analysis to identify novel phosphorylation sites throughout the protein and located within different functional domains. Of interest for our lab is the tyrosine 841, which is located in the kinase domain. This residue is conserved amongst various species and within JAK family members. To better study tyrosine 841 phosphorylation, we created fossil-specific antibodies that recognize fossil peptide over non-fossil peptide, phosphorylated protein from in vitro kinase assays, and fossil tyrosine 841 from cellular protein that was obtained from human leukemia cell lines. The fossil tyrosine 841 antibody was used to detect JAK3 in cell lines transformed with the JAK3 mutations M511I and A573V, as well as from various human leukemia cell lines. Next, we performed a structural analysis using the known crystal structure of the JAK3 kinase domain and localized tyrosine 841 to the end lobe loop near the very important glycine lid used by kinases to anchor ATP. With the help of our biophysics collaborators at UTEP, we found that tyrosine 841 drastically changes the surrounding surface electrostatic potential from positively charged in non-phosphoprotein to negatively charged in phosphoprotein. We believe this is one of many sites that is important for kinase dimerization and overall protein function. In summary, we have identified 10 novel JAK3 autophosphorylation sites and shown that tyrosine 841 is constitutively autophosphorylated and positionally conserved amongst JAK family members as well as other kinases. Tyrosine 841 is present in human leukemia samples, including the A573 valine transforming mutation. Phosphorylation of this site changes the surface charge in surrounding areas. 
So the tools developed in the study show a potential to explore hematopoietic cancers driven by JAK kinases and may propagate new ways to inhibit overactive JAK protein. I'd like to thank the 2022 RCMI Consortium National Conference, the Border Biomedical Research Center for their support, and the National Institutes on Minority Health and Health Disparities for their grant support. Thank you very much for your time.